My name is Jesse Moffat. I'm the Director of Collections at the National Music Centre. My role at the National Music Centre is to ensure the long-term care and preservation of our collections and to ensure appropriate access. The 2013 flooding impacted uh, both our new facility and our old facility where our collections were stored. The new facility was a large hole in the ground. We were just laying the foundation work and it was completely submerged underwater. And our old building, which housed a large portion of our collection, uh, most of it uh, was above ground, but the lower portion experienced anywhere between 45 centimeters and 150 centimeters of floodwaters. The first phase of the salvage really focused on smaller objects that we could manually carry up the stairs. Uh, that lasted for about six days, and then the last six days, which is really the large push, was focused on 143 grand pianos and larger items that on average weighed about 300 kilos each, were all moved to an off-site facility in the last six days of the salvage efforts. So recognizing the importance of ensuring that we were to mitigate as much damage to the collection as possible, we were able to secure an off-site facility that uh, turned out to be a long-term storage facility, uh, but we found that within about three to four days and uh, started moving the larger objects there. During the flood, this off-site storage facility was used as sort of a secondary triage location. Uh, all of the damaged parts and flood damaged um, instruments were brought here for immediate assessment, documentation and cleaning. Our communications team used was very, very proactive, and I would say that we were very proactive versus reactive with our social media plan. In the end, we noticed that there was a thousand percent increase in our Facebook uh, hits, also a 200 percent increase in Twitter. There was an overwhelming response from the community. Uh, the only thing that we had to do is ensure that we could facilitate volunteers' efforts in the most efficient way possible. So at times that actually was saying that we don't need help right now and we'll get back to you. As a result of lessons learned from the 2013 flood, we've created a new position which is the coordinator of volunteers. And it's a, it's a very, very important role. I can't stress enough the importance of that role when you have uh, a team or an army of volunteers that are assisting with you. And that is a role that is uh, definitely part of our new uh, disaster response plan for both Studio Bell and our off-site facility. We also hired a videographer. And that videographer documented the entire process with audio, video, and still images so that we could look back and try to improve on the disaster recovery efforts from 2013. It was important to recognize the stress and mental health of employees both during and after the disaster. Throughout the salvage process, we noticed that about 10% of the staff were because of stress and you're amidst a natural disaster and perhaps they were affected personally. Uh, we're not essentially up for the challenge, which is, which is okay uh, because we had a great support from all the volunteers and our uh, consultant. The National Music Center hired a third-party consultant to assist with the flood recovery, insurance, uh, triage, salvage, all of those aspects. We worked very closely with the heritage consultant and it really assisted the organization and to propel things forward. We are an institution that, you know, as a conservator, loves the objects and they were there as a separation between you and your passion with the objects and the realities of of going through salvage. There is a need for fluidity in decision making and response because in a disaster situation, nothing goes as planned. It's not a linear path. It really is every day there's going to be something else thrown at you.
Best laid plans, the, even though the off-site facility was outside the floodplain and outside any area of the natural disaster, the day we planned on moving all the large objects, which was day six and seven, uh, there was a train derailment and that facility was within the blast zone. And um, it, it was something to take, <laughs> take back, but uh, we looked at, uh, we got out a map and we were able to find a pathway to that, to that facility so that we could stay on schedule uh, with, the, um, with the removal of some of our largest objects. That facility is uh, outside any floodplain and uh, has recently been outfit thanks to generous support from the Alberta Museums Association that is now meeting uh, museum best practices. It's environmentally controlled now, which it wasn't before. It has a vault. We're installing a fire suppression system. It's got compact storage. It's a secure facility that uh, is climate controlled. In preparation for the next natural disaster, which I hope will never happen, we've embraced a uh, storage philosophy that absolutely everything has to be mobile. And in our basement storage areas, we've created these large, mobile, uh, compact units that we call them elephants and they measure four feet by eight feet by seven feet tall and they can seamlessly move out of all of our collection storage area into our large cargo elevator and up into a controlled room uh, in less than a few hours. So if something were to ever happen again, we know that we have backup generators that will operate our facility for a number of hours, which will allow us the time to move everything out seamlessly. As a result of our experience in 2013, we've learned a lot. And uh, with the help of the Alberta Museums Association, we've really been able to put forth a plan that we can stand behind that identifies roles, identifies the stresses that staff will likely go through, identify the fact that everything should be mobile. The treatment conservation on our irreplaceable electronics parts collection has been remarkably successful. So at NMC we keep about 20% of the collection in a functioning condition, we call it uh, living artifacts. And uh, this electronic parts collection here at Offsite helps to uh, support that. Since the flood we've had a lot of success with the recovery of these parts. Um, the process is still ongoing, but as of now we have an up-to-date inventory of everything and we know where everything is located. One of the processes we use to clean these parts that's uh, kind of new and innovative for this field is uh, the use of ultrasonic cleaning tanks. Um, basically it cleans with bubbles, very tiny microscopic bubbles that uh, form and pop on an object surface and remove the dirt. It's often used with jewelry and other small objects and we've put it to work with our delicate objects here. And then once we put the object in the tank, uh, usually it's all the dirt that's under crevices and cracks that starts to come out. And then afterwards we take them out of the tank and dry them with a dry air compressor to get all of the water off. The next step after we clean the objects is to rehouse them in a conservation grade storage material. Um, for circuit boards in specific, we house them in static shielding material to block uh, the flow of static electricity through the parts. We've uh, really been trailblazers in the preservation and restoration of flood damaged electronic parts. So much so that one of our lead conservators has presented at the Canadian Association of Conservation and her paper is going to be published. Conservation considerations that came out of the 2013 flood um, had us look at the use of ethophone as a physical barrier. We found during the flooding that it acted more of a sponge and that really absorbed a lot of water and caused accelerated um, mold growth in a lot of the organic objects that we have. Working with some of the other institutions that were affected by the flood, there's a lot of lessons that were learned and the share of knowledge uh, has been instrumental in moving forward and preparing for future floods. The disaster plan for the 2013 flood was really focused on all hands on deck. We have to make it through this as a young organization that was amidst a capital campaign and opening up a new facility in just a few years. Since then, we've really made some 
huge strides in the progress of developing a disaster plan that is for this facility, Studio Bell, but also our off-site facility. It identifies roles and responsibilities and it's, uh, it's much more structured and I feel confident that if faced again with such a monumental task that uh, there wouldn't be any issues going through it. Funding gained through the Alberta Museums Association has really propelled the National Museum Centre forward to being a first-class facility to care for some of our collections. Uh, Canadian treasures were entrusted as the new home for music in Canada and going forward I'm very, very confident that we'll fulfill that mandate.